This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today in our Cuisinart COS 330, we're going to do some venison roast, or as I like to call it, deer roast. I know, venison is the appropriate term, but that's what I call it. So first, let's get started by saying that preheating your smoker is always a must. I went ahead and started the preheating process, and now I'm going to go ahead and do the pre-seasoning process. I'll take the wood chip pan and fill it with just a handful of chips. Today, I'm gonna to use the Smokehouse Products Blend flavor. It has an interesting combination and it's very good. It doesn't get overwhelming, but it also adds a really good, rich taste to all of your smoked food. Now, I only put in a little bit, but that's just because I just want enough to get a good season when I get started here. I'll go ahead and open that up. I'll slide this in. So on the last cook, I lowered this bottom grate all the way down so that way we would have plenty of room for our roasts in there. And now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a sheet of tin foil because this roast is relatively small, we don't need a lot of foil. So just a pop-up Reynolds aluminum will work just great. Fold both sides. And just like that, right in the middle, and that will be ready for any drippings that come off of that roast. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close that, and then I'm gonna let that smoke a little bit to pre-season the smoker before we start cooking. So let me grab the roast, I'll be right back. First, let's start with the roast. This is not a very big roast. It's probably about three pounds. And the game processor or butcher, he took and put it together, placed it inside the bag. Well, I thought that there was still a little bit too much silver skin on it for my liking. So of course, I cut one side of the bag open to get this out of there with convenience. I probably should have tried to work it out a little bit more, but I got it out and I trimmed off a large amount of the silver skin and then I placed the bag back on the side with most of the loose meat. On this side, most of the meat is in one piece, but on the other side, it's probably the bone side where he had to trim around the bone to get this off of that piece. Now for seasoning, we're gonna use kind of a combination here. And I'm gonna explain that to you real quick. So of course, I'm gonna use my 3-2-1-1 mix, but years ago, somebody told me that if you take and use two of the teaspoons of beef bouillon powder, along with whatever your favorite seasoning is, your deer will taste like beef. Now, it's not an absolute must, but for me, I wanna add a little bit more of a beef taste to this, and if you wanna do that, this is an excellent hack that you might like. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a separate shaker for this, and we'll take a funnel, put a little bit of that in there. So I put about two and a half teaspoons in there because I always spill some of this. Remember to always shake your seasonings first. A little bit more in here. Looks like we're doing pretty good, not spilling too much, so I'm not gonna put all of it in. And then a little more of this in there. And just like the other one, we need a little bit of room in the bottle so that way we can shake it. Put the screen back on there and then lid really tight, get it shook up. I'll be right back. Now that I've shooken it up, what I like to do is I like to test it a little bit and make sure we're good. And yeah, it looks really good there. If I need that, I'll put it back in the bottle, but for now, I'm gonna just go ahead 
and cover this with what I have in this container. This should be just about the right amount. It might be kind of close. And again, this side here doesn't have any bag on it, so I got to be kind of careful with it. I'm notorious for under seasoning my meat, so let's make sure we don't do that today. I have to say that that looks pretty good. Now what we're gonna do, you know the trick. We're gonna slide it over here onto the grill mat. And just like that, it's ready to go. Now double check and see that you didn't knock any off there. I got a little spot there that I just knocked some of the seasoning off. Could use a little bit more on that end right there and a little bit more on that edge. That looks good. Now let's see how we're doing over here. The smoker is running at 237 on the PID. I did set it at 225, but it hasn't had a chance to totally dial in yet. So it's going to take about 30 more minutes for it to level off. And if you're concerned about that, of course, you can lower the temperature just a little bit. Up here, we're showing almost 250, so that's about the normal difference between the two. Go ahead and open that up. Now, before I do anything else, I wanna get one of these thermometers right here into the back of the smoker. I'm gonna put that in there. Right about there. And then that way you'll be able to get a good temperature reading right off the back. Then I'm gonna set this in there. Make sure that the foil and the meat are lined up so that way any of the drippings go into that tray. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna go ahead and move the table out of the way and then we'll take a look at that thermometer. So down here, we have the thermometer, and that is the probe that's sitting on the back of the shelf. And you can watch it climb up. It hasn't normalized to the temperature inside yet, so that's why it's moving up so fast. But I expect to see it come up to right about the 230 range and stop right about there to match the PID. Now over here is what the PID says, the temperature is inside and we just let out all of the heat so you have to remember that that's going to take a minute to get reheated the temperature is set to 225 but again that's a range and the pid will raise it and lower it until it figures out exactly how to balance that temperature out and that takes about a half an hour to 45 minutes for it to really get a good idea if you really want the best performance out of this Preheat your smoker for more than an hour and it will really give you the best results. Also, open and close your door really fast because that'll mess up its algorithm also. We have 223 here on the temperature probe and it's still climbing just a little bit. The other probe is sitting right here. Now, I'm not gonna do anything with that until we get farther along in the cook because I wanna be able to check the temperature on the inside, but it's kind of a hassle if we need to move the roast around. Plus, once the roast has kind of set up and formed an outside crust, then what'll happen is it'll be easier to move the roast, and also we can probably remove that bag. So if we remove that knit bag, once it's set up really good, it won't affect anything, and it'll just be easier to cook and get all of the surfaces evenly with a nice crispy bark on there. And I did keep some of that seasoning on the side so we can add more a little bit later in the cook. So today, I do not plan on feeding this with wood chips three or four times. I did put the wood chips in there to do a pre-season, but that was it. That'll get a good start on it. I'm gonna use the pellet tray. I got my new brulee torch here, and I'm gonna go ahead and light that up. 
get a little flame on it. Now it's been burning really slow for a while. I didn't load it very high though because I don't want it to produce a lot of smoke. I just want a little bit over time. This is not a very well ventilated smoker. So there's a very small amount of air intake on the very bottom where the drip tray is and a very small exit hole on the back. So we don't want to overdo it. I'll go ahead and blow that out. And you can see that's just about the amount of smoke that we want. I'm going to insert this on the bottom shelf, but I think what I'm going to have to do is move the foil. You can see it sitting right in there and then the foil above it. You definitely want something above it because you don't want it going straight into the meat. The smoke can actually cause hot spots and overcook little spots on the bottom of your food. So you don't want to do that. So now that that's all set up, we're going to let it cruise along for about an hour before we do anything else. And then I'll check on it. And if the meat has set up, I'll remove that bag and insert the thermometer. That'll be about, again, an hour for me and one second for you. I'm back and let's go ahead and take a look at this. First, I want you to know that there is smoke coming around the edges. Now I deliberately made sure that I didn't over tighten the door because I wanted to make sure that there was a little bit of leaking around the door, mostly for smoke and airflow. Now, if I do make a modification to this smoker, most likely the first thing I will do is either drill a couple of holes in the front and a couple of holes on the top and the back. So that way I can put on control vents or maybe to the side, which might be a better idea. And then I can put in a pipe that I can also use to add cold smoke to the smoker right into the middle of it. Now let's go ahead and open it up. I'm gonna to try to stand back a little bit because that pellet tray is definitely kicking up a lot of smoke. That looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna insert this thermometer. I'm gonna to try to insert it from this side. See, I put it in right here. I'm trying to get it right into the midpoint right there. Go ahead and close the door. So that smoke is coming out a touch heavier than what I had planned on. So I might pull that tray out in about 30 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on how it goes. But the venison roast itself looks really good. It's still completely rare and soft. Let's go ahead and get an idea what the temperature is. <clears throat> Currently, the thermometer is sitting at 90 degrees, which is a pretty good move, and it looks like it's almost stabilized. So maybe it went up to 91 just now, but overall, it looks like it's not moving very fast, which is a good thing. We want it to come low and slow up to temperature. So let's go ahead and take another break, and hopefully that'll be about an hour for me but only one second for you. It's been about an hour and a half, 30 minutes more than my originally planned time, but I was going for a particular point. Now, about 30 minutes in, I went ahead and I pulled the pellet tray out of there because I felt like it had enough smoke and there's still a little bit of wood chips in the primary pan that were yet to smoke off, but they go really, really slow. So you don't have to worry too much about that. So I went ahead and about 30 minutes ago, I removed the bag from the roast. And then I also took and lightly sprayed the surface with some olive oil and added just a touch more seasoning where the cracks kind of opened up mostly, but you know, some of it got everywhere. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna see if I can flip it. I'll go ahead and open that up and then you'll be able to get a really close look here.
And it does look really dark, but keep in mind that is a characteristic of venison. It is pretty soft. If I can get it to flip over here without falling apart. That really is why the bag is there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add just a little bit. A little more right back there. It looks pretty good. I don't think I need to add any more seasoning. I think she looks perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. I'm not gonna move the camera for this, but what we have is an internal temperature of 136. Now, the last time I checked the FDA website, it said 145 internal temperature on pieces of meat like this. So because we're smoking at such a low temperature for this, I want to bring it up to about 142 and then we'll rest it into the 145 range. That'll be three degrees. It might go up to 147, any higher than that. And I think that we would end up with some dry meat and we don't want to be in that range where it's 147 to 192. We either want to be below it or we want to be above it. So let's go ahead and let this roll for a few more minutes. And as soon as I reach that temperature, I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and wrap it and let it rest for about 20, 30 minutes in the cooler. It's been about 30 more minutes and I think we're just about there. So I'm looking at this right now and I want you to get a look at the close up. So let's come down here. And first, the temperature is 140 degrees internal inside our venison roast. I'm just waiting just that second because I don't want it to not get where it wants to go. The upper thermometer is reading 246, but I think that's a touch high. This one here is only reading about 210, but I know that one's 25 degrees low. The PID is reading 227.0. I want you to watch something here, if you can see that in the close-up cam. See that little blinking red light? That's the PID turning the element on and off very quick and in very short burst. It has learned throughout the process how to control the element to get exactly the temperature that it wants. And as long as you leave the door closed, it will really nail that temperature down. And you can just see how close it is. I couldn't be any happier with that result. The manual adjustment, there's just no way you would get any kind of temperature control out of it like that. Now we're just waiting here for another minute. So let's go ahead and take a quick break and then I'll be right back. So it's been about five minutes and we are there now. Let's go ahead and open that up. I'm gonna pull this tray out a little ways that out of our way and keep in mind all this metal is really hot I'll pick this up with the grill mat and set it down right here and I'm going to go ahead and close this and let it continue to run So I'm going to throw a little bit more wood chips in there after we're done with the video. So that way I can make sure that it completely flushes out whatever flavor we have here. And then we'll be ready for the next cook with just a little bit of heating and a little more smoke. It'll be excellent. Now let's take a look at this. I'm going to just go ahead and move it over. And it definitely looks like it is medium rare. I'm going to go ahead and set this to the side. And then just like anything else, we're just going to wrap it up and fold it over. Just like that. Just like that. In here. And then we'll just set it in the cooler 
let it rest for a few minutes. When I say a few minutes, what I really mean is 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take another break. I'll see you in one second. It is time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab that out of the cooler. Go ahead and unwrap that, it looks a little messy. A little bit of the juice has come out. I'm gonna try to keep this like this so it makes a nice little pan to carry it in the house. Feels perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and take a slice right here next to that little loose piece. Open that up and let you get a little look at that. Look at that color. That's just barely medium, which is pretty close to where I like my venison. Go ahead and let you get a look at that really quick before we take a bite. All right, let's see how we did. That is really good. See if you can see how easily that comes apart like that. A few little pieces of the silver skin still here and there, but that's kind of hard to avoid. And I gotta tell you that I was worried that I might need to brine it or soak it to reduce the gaminess, but not at all. And that touch of beef bouillon just really adds to the flavor and it kind of brings it more towards something that I'm more used to, you know, more like a regular everyday roast. Yeah, that just tastes like nice soft roast beef. All right, well, we've totally nailed this. I am very pleased with the results here. I think it could have used maybe a touch more garlic. We got all the pepper flavor in there, which is what I was really going for. And the PID really came through for us to give us this excellent temperature control that this smoker really needs. Now, I could have sat out here and watch that temperature gauge and made adjustments for hours and it would have been just fine. However, I would rather go do other things while the controller does all the work for me. Again, easy, you can do this without the PID and this model of smoker. You just have to grab yourself a beverage, maybe watch the game and keep an eye on the thermometer as it cooks. Thanks for watching. If you saw anything you like in the video, there will be affiliate links below. I will get compensated for those. I appreciate it. Also below, you're going to find some articles in there. And one of them will be this smoked venison article. Another article will be coming up, which will be the final review for this smoker. I only have one more cook before I feel confident writing that article. And then we'll be able to do a few fun play cooks. I think there's probably some more salmon in my future because it is salmon season. And I think that this smoker is ideal for that with the PID. So thanks for watching and have a great day.